This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is coming out of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Profile video, and this time I figured I'd show you just another one of the little projects I've been working on in the early Code of the Duelist Link era format of the game, because there's not really a lot that can link summon on demand outside of World Chalice, and everything else is just zoo and things like that that have continued to exist since practically the dawn of time, it feels like at this point. So I wanted to show you guys something, something different. Now this is one of the Herald of Perfection lists that I've been working on. I've got two lists that I've been working on. The other list that I'm not showing you today has a lot more kaijus in it. It's very heavily kaiju oriented to deal with established masterpieces because Herald of Perfection as a deck has a very hard time dealing with things like masterpiece if they are already pre-established and things like that. So uh, it's that, that basically just that's the main thing that has to be considered. But this is one of a more combo oriented builds. It's weaker to True Draco, but it's more fun to play out your first turns with, and so that is why I figured I'd show it to you today. It's a more combo oriented version of the deck. So without wasting any more time, let's just jump straight into it and I'll give you reasonings as we go. Uh, starting out, this 40 card deck is three Herald of Perfection and three Cyber Angel Benton. These are the only rituals that are being run in the build because you don't want to clog your deck down with things that basically aren't really combo cards this deck is very very interestingly characterized by literally being like 39 engine cards and an upstart goblin uh whereas things like Sephira and stuff are more of in-game co uh, cards rather than uh, engine cards and engine starters uh but so playing three gale dogger in the deck uh, i'm not playing any manjus in this list even though it is searchable off benton uh, because Manju only gives you one card and it just doesn't feel like it's worth it for the normal summon nowadays Whereas now we have cards like Mrs. Radiant and things like that that allow us to summon Gale Dogra Pay 6k, dump two Herald of the Arc Lights, search two cards, which is even better It's a lot more fantastic than just summoning Manju and searching one uh, And then uh, you're able to usually unbreak your hand with something like that Or you're able to just get a very much better hand for summoning two Heralds Because you're trying to summon two Herald of Perfection every game Because that means you can't get Kaiju. You can get Kaiju for one, but then the other one stays so that's why Manju just doesn't really carry a lot of weight anymore, whereas Gale Dogra is very good uh, in the deck for being able to, You are able to pay 6,000 and then just not lose because you can just link this into like Mrs. Radiant or something like that if your hand can support it. So you play smart with the card and it rewards you for it. So that's why there's no Manjus, but there is Gale Dogras. But, so carrying on, we've got the Star Seraph engine with Scepters and Sovereignties. These cards are always solid. You start with either none of them or one of them and Benton gets you one or both. Uh, whichever one you are missing, essentially. It's also great for like how it just gives you extra negates in your hand at the end of your first turn combo sequences with Herald, uh, because you can Ritual Sanctuary Scepter back after everything has been done and get a search for the last Sovereignty in your deck if you've already comboed off, and then that's just an extra negate. Uh, the fact that these make things like Ouroboros and give you extra cards in the process, man, I can't say enough good things about the Star Seraph engine, so we're just going to move on. Uh, but because this is more of the combo-oriented version, I'm also playing... The, uh, the Fluffle Engine, essentially, which is two bear, one wings, and one Gym Knight Garnet to go with the Brilliant Fusions that are essentially only really played because of the Fluffle Engine in this. Now, these are fairies, so they are negates, so they do have natural synergy with the deck, but using the wings play for, like, toy vendor plays and stuff like that to allow you to just draw extra cards is, ooh, fantastic. And the fact that this is in the deck, it's, rely it's a lot more reliable with this in the deck to play Brilliant Fusion. Uh, you can still play Brilliant Fusion in the deck if you're not playing... Uh, the Fluffle Engine, but like it becomes a lot less reliable because like you don't have such a solid card like Fluffle Wing to send to grave. Because basically every time you resolve Brilliant Fusion for Seraph Knight, you're sending these two cards. You're putting the Wing in the grave to load up, uh, and then you're going to use the Toy Vendor play to net you a negate at the end of it because you're going to search the Barrel Toy Vendor. But then you're also going to draw two cards. Uh, so like it's just it's a it's a great engine starter. It's a great enabler for your deck in in general essentially. Uh, but if you're not playing the Fluffle Engine in the deck, you could easily still play Brilliant Fusion, but, like, you'd have to replace Wings with something that's, like, equally as good. But I don't think anything like that exists other than something like Trick Clown, but that doesn't have any synergy with the rest of your deck. Um, like, there's, there's, there's a bunch of problems with that. But anyway, last monster in the deck is one copy of Max C, so that's 20 monsters. And then we're going to be going into 20 spells. It's a very, very well-rounded deck list, actually, in terms of ratios. But uh, three Ritual Sanctuaries starting us off alongside with three Terraformings. There's no reason not to max out on uh, six of this card because you can just you can activate Terraforming to add a second Ritual Sanctuary and then discard it for the first Ritual Sanctuary. And then that just loads more spells in Grave for the Ritual Sanctuary's second effect to go off. So, like, 
It's uh, it's actually great. I wish that we had. This is another one of those decks that I wish we had like Chicken Game for, because we'd be able to activate Chicken Game, draw a card, play a Ritual Sanctuary over it, and then use Ritual Sanctuary to shuffle shuffle the Chicken Game back into the deck, turning our terraformings into infinite uh, upstart goblins essentially. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not how Yu-Gi-Oh goes because that card is banned in the TCG, but still at three in the OCG because the OCG knows how to hit problems and not enablers. But carrying on, uh, the three Ritual spells for Herald, three Dawn of the Herald, nothing else to explain there. You want to resolve at least two of them in a game, so I mean that's that's why you play three. You want to draw that card. Uh, and speaking of cards you also want to draw, we play the four preparation of rights, the three pre-preps and the one prep. Uh, I mean there's there's no reason I should be explaining these cards, they're good. Specifically pre-prep. Pre-prep is such an amazing starter card that it's not even funny. But carrying on, we have the uh, cards that support the Fluffle Engine, we have the three toy vendors, and then we have three brilliant fusions. I lump these in with like the Fluffle Engine because like I already explained earlier, they are what make the Fluffle Engine like a lot better off suited for things because you're able to use Brilliant Fusion to send Wings and Garnet, and then Wings has in like in like direct synergy with Toy Vendor. Now Toy Vendor is very neat because you can usually cycle a lot of them out of your deck and they help fuel your Ritual Sanctuaries. What I mean by this is, if you draw, you may be thinking that if you draw Brilliant Fusion and Toy Vendor, that you're going to send Wings and not have Baron Grave and that it'll be dead, but that's by far not the case. You can play Brilliant Fusion, send your Wings and your Garnet. And if you have Ritual Sanctuary, it's even better, because Ritual Sanctuary, you just discard Toy Vendor for Ritual Sanctuary to get a search, then Toy Vendor adds Bear, and then you discard Bear and set the second Toy Vendor from your deck. If you don't have Ritual Sanctuary yet, you're still fine, because you can activate Brilliant Fusion's effect to make Seraph Knight gain the attack value that it lost, and you can discard Toy Vendor, and then Toy Vendor will trigger getting Bear, then you'll discard Bear setting Toy Vendor, activate the Toy Vendor, and then do the draw two play. So, uh, it's just a good draw two, like, and two card starting combo. Like, Brilliant Fusion Toy Vendor is just by itself just an enabler for allowing you to draw cards and that's fantastic in a deck like this where you're trying to get to as many cards as possible as quickly as possible so uh, there's things like that that just help out you in the long term long run last card in the main deck is one copy of upstart goblin make this deck 39 cards um, sometimes you just don't activate the upstart goblin sometimes you have no spells in hand other than ritual sanctuary and upstart and you just discard upstart with ritual sanctuary but then sometimes you try to be ignorant and get lucky so I mean there's things like that but the extra deck I'm going to show you a bit in a, of a weird fashion because like literally half of it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to show you like that part of the, so the extra deck that matter first and then the stuff that doesn't afterwards. Like it's literally like the most flexible extra deck I've ever seen. But anyway, uh, first two cards are two Herald of the Arc Light for obvious reasons. Gale Dagra, Seraph Knight for the Brilliant Fusion, Mrs. Radiant for the Brilliant Fusion play. Uh, the play with Brilliant Fusion is that you get to Brilliant Fusion and Gale Dagra and you play Brilliant Fusion, summoning Seraph Knight, and then you normal summon your Gale Dagra, get your two searches. And then you link with the Seraph Knight and the Gale Dogger into Mrs. Radiant because they are Earths. And so then that opens up zones for you. More importantly, it opens up zones and you still have your normal summon so you can do the Scepter Sovereignty play if your hand was good enough to support that later in the turn as well. Uh, but then we also have Evil Swamp Ouroboros, uh, Satellar Knight Delteros, Stellar Stellar Knight Diamond, and to a lesser extent, uh, Ptolemy M7 that can go on top of Diamond, turning these three cards into like a little mini engine. Uh, these are the only important cards in your extra deck. Literally the only important ones. These are the ones you make, uh, like, to the extent of, uh, like, almost every game. You're making Ouroboros literally every game, but then if you have Scepter Sovereignty plays, you can make Delteros again later if you're going second. Um, and you can make Diamond against Mill decks, but then this card can sometimes be put on top of Diamond um, for, like, extension on your following turns. Uh, but these are literally the only cards that matter in the extra deck. The rest literally don't matter. Utopia the Lightning, regular Utopia, Karn Gorgon, Silent Honor Arc, Abyss Dweller, Digusto Emerald, and Tornado Dragon were literally like seven cards that I just had sitting around that were doing absolutely nothing, so I filled out the extra deck with it so that I could put it in this video and not have people say, Why is your extra deck only like seven cards? It's because it doesn't matter. It literally does not matter. With the loss of Norden and Instant Fusion, we lost the ability to make a lot of like on point rank fours like Fairy Cheerle and thing like th things like that. So everything is really like reliant on the Scepter Sovereignty Engine, even more so with this deck not having access to something like Trick Clown um, or uh, Manju's the normal summon, things like that. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below on this deck and all that sort of nonsense. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook and my Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, Patreon is the best way to do so. Helps me able to make more content in a more reasonable fashion. Helps me improve equipment and all that sort of stuff. Special thank you to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and everybody else that's supporting me over on Patreon this month. It helps out a ton, and you guys already should know how grateful I am. But in case you don't already, I am eternally grateful, and thank you very much for the support that you've given. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. 
Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as I've already said. And take care. I will see you in the next video.